In the wake of new anti-abortion laws across the country, like the recent Texas ban on abortions past six weeks, the House Oversight Committee decided to hold a hearing on protecting abortion access. And during this hearing, pretty courageous members of Congress, including Cori Bush, decided to share the story of their abortion and why it was so important to have access to it. Let's watch. Shortly after graduating, I went on to a, on a church trip to Jackson, Mississippi. I had many friends on that trip and while there, I met a boy, a friend of a friend. He was a little older than I was, about maybe 20 years old. That first day we met, we flirted, we talked on the phone. While on the phone, he asked me, could he come over to my room? I was bunking with a friend and hanging out and said he could stop by. But he didn't show up for a few hours and by the time he did, it was so late that my friend and I had gone to bed. I answered the door and quietly told him he could come in, imagining that we would talk and laugh like we had done over the phone. But the next thing I knew, he was on top of me, messing with my clothes and not saying anything at all. What is happening? I thought, I didn't know what to do. I, I was frozen in shock, just laying there as his weight pressed down upon me. When he was done, he got up, he pulled up his pants, and without a word, he left. That was it. I was confused, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed. I asked myself, was it something that I had done? And uh, so not only did she share uh, her experience getting raped, uh, she later talked about how she felt when she found out she was pregnant from that rape. Let's watch. About a month after the trip, I turned 18. A few weeks later, I realized I had missed my period. I was 18, I was broke and I felt so alone. I blamed myself for what had happened to me. But I knew I had options. I had known other girls who had gone to a local clinic to get birth control and some who had gotten abortions. So I looked through the yellow pages and scheduled an appointment. During my first visit, I found out that I was nine weeks Nine weeks pregnant, and then there the panic set in. How could I make this pregnancy work? How could I, at 18 years old and barely scraping by, support a child on my own? Um, it's uh, anyway, so she, she finds out she's pregnant, and then uh, she talks about why she got an abortion and how it was the right choice for her. Final video on this. Let's watch. My abortion happened on a Saturday. There were a few other people in the clinic room, waiting room, including one other young black girl. I overheard the clinic staff talking about her saying she had ruined her life and that's what they do. They being black girls like us. Before the procedure, I remember going in for counseling and being told that if I move forward with this pregnancy, my baby would be jacked up because the fetus was already malnourished and underweight. Being told that if I had this baby, I would wind up on food stamps and welfare. I was being talked to like trash and it worsened my shame. I went home, my body ached and I had this heavy bleeding. I felt so sick, I felt dizzy, nauseous. I felt like something was missing. I felt alone, but I also felt so resolved in my decision. Choosing to have an abortion was the hardest decision I had ever made. I, but at 18 years old, I knew it was the right decision for me. It was freeing, knowing I had options. Even still, it took long for me to feel like me again until most recently when I decided to give this speech. So it was incredibly brave for her to share that story and she wasn't the only one. Um, Barbara Lee shared her experience uh, getting an abortion and she got an abortion at a time when it wasn't legal in the United States. So she had to uh, go to Mexico to get an abortion and she remembers being terrified about it. Which is why it's so important for it to be accessible and legal so it's actually safe. Because women who desperately want an abortion are gonna find a way to abort and they're gonna oftentimes if they're uh, you know poor, do it in ways that could get them killed. So these speeches are uh, very brave. Now, in a lot of parts of the world, it's not brave to say you've had an abortion. It's perfectly normal. Uh, they, because there's no um, stigma. 
not just that there's no stigma, there's no brainwashing in the first place about how the God, I'll just leave it at that, uh, it has commanded you certain things. Again, it's not in the Bible, it's not even true. But they brainwash people into thinking, oh, this, and this, this is the most important moral issue. Whereas in other parts of the world, they think it's like knee surgery. They don't think it's a big deal at all. And I know that there's a lot of you that are outraged by that. If you're, you know, how could they think that? Well, they do, and it makes sense. It's a zygote. It doesn't, so not everyone has to have your sense of so called morality. Right, um, but in this country, that line of thinking has been so oppressive and so dominant that giving a speech like this about your own abortion, up until recently, was unthinkable. It would have ended your political career. It would have gotten a you know unbelievable vitriol against you. It's still going to get vitriol, but it would have been that vitriol would have been largely supported by mess, uh, rest of the media. They would have found it outrageous to say things like this. And now, no, progressives are emboldened to say, yeah, I'm not embarrassed by it. And now it was a terrible moment in my life, as she explained there. But other people go through it too. And I'm not gonna let you shame them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my story so people know they're not alone. That is strength and courage. I wanna also just read a quick quote from Barbara Lee. She had said this, I was one of the lucky ones, Madam Chair. A lot of girls and women in my generation didn't make it. They died from unsafe abortions. In the 1960s, unsafe septic abortions were the primary killer, primary killer of African American women. My personal experience shaped my beliefs to fight for people's reproductive freedom. And again, I mean, John and I talked about this briefly on yesterday's show. And, you know, we care so much about medical privacy, about HIPAA regulations to ensure that our medical records are safe, that they're secure, that our medical conditions aren't public information. But when it comes to these abortion laws, think about it, right? It, it's such an invasion of privacy on the most personal matters. And then you, you hear the arguments in favor of these anti-abortion laws from conservatives who claim to be the arbiters of freedom, like the, the, the protectors of freedom in America. No, they're not, no, they're not. They want to empower fellow Americans to demonize women, to track women, to stalk women, to see whether or not they're getting an illegal abortion, to speculate about how far along they are in their pregnancy. It's disgusting, that's not freedom. I mean, it's just, yeah. so I'm glad they had this hearing. I, I don't know how this is all gonna play out. The Supreme Court is gonna hear a case involving um, you know, anti-abortion laws in Mississippi. And the way they rule on that case is going to have, uh, you know, it's gonna set a precedent. It's gonna have a widespread effect across the country. And considering the fact that we have religious zealots sitting in the Supreme Court who were confirmed by Donald Trump or appointed by Donald Trump and confirmed by the Senate. I'm, I'm terrified about what the outcome is gonna be. Because I do think that women, if abortion becomes illegal in several red states across the country, women are gonna die. Women are gonna seek out abortions in an unsafe way and they're gonna die as a result. And just as important as taking away their freedom as, as human beings and their dignity and self respect and saying no, you don't really matter. The government's gonna decide what to do with your body. And we're gonna use you as chattel, a vessel for a more important person. Hopefully cross your fingers it's a male, right? Because if it's a female, we'll just capture her body and make her carry things to term. Even if it's a rapist child, we don't care. You're just a vessel, you're not important, you're not relevant. You're not a real person like a man. That's what being in favor of the anti-choice position means. So if you're a Republican, you say, "Oh no, no, I, I don't think it's an independent human being when it's um, viable, like we think, right? I think it's an independent human being when it's a zygote. Well, that makes no sense, but whatever, that's your opinion. Okay, but you're not allowed to say you're for freedom because you're not for women's freedom. You just aren't, it's a fact, that's a fact. Hey, I don't want this thing growing inside of me. I don't care about your freedom, I'm gonna make big government intrude into the most private decision in the world, what you carry inside your body. So you're not for freedom, so shut up about it and never say the word again. And 
don't ever talk about government tyranny. Because you're in favor of the biggest government tyranny there is. You can say, "Oh, the government had to do it. I believe in big government. I believe in government tyranny to make you carry this thing inside of you for nine months, even if you were raped. I, I, that is a fascist, ridiculous, insane government power. If you're in favor of it, that's fine. Just admit that you love government tyranny. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.